Echelon Blonde uh, from the Los Not Eagles crew, Prime Sayers. I am the Mr. Gene Pool, um, original headshot, full circle, dapple, you know, about it. Me, I was born in San Antonio, Texas in 1973, son. Um, and I moved here like when I was, well, before I was five. Grew up on the east side of the, of St. Paul. Graduated from the east side of St. Paul. So, I mean, I've been in Twin Cities a long time, man. Cool. Let me see, I was born in St. Paul, right right down the street from the Capitol, right? It was at Ramsey Hospital back down in 1970s, 74. That's around the time when they dropped me off. And then I just been pretty much uh, Twin Cities you know, northern Minnesota, early childhood, northern Minnesota, bouncing back and forth from the cities, north side, south side, all parts of St. Paul, probably every Brooklyn Center Park, all the south suburbs, east, west, all over this batch. For me, it was, it was P.E. 100% it was P.E. A little bit of KRS one. But when Public Enemy came out with Yo Bum Rush the Show, I was like, damn. That's what, what really made me want to do it. But I mean, um, KRS one was a big influence for me when I first entered um this game and started rhyming and DJing and, and making beats. What made me want to do it was to me it seemed like the coolest thing to be doing after I was done roller skating and totally maxed that out. After I pretty much almost murdered myself on a BMX, and then skateboarding was just, I got a little bit good, a couple ollies and stuff, so I got kind of, you know, I, okay, that's not my game, whatever, whatever. But going to like the house parties, the house parties in the late 80s and whatnot, and then going into the kitchen or whatever, and there's like a few heads and sh about five or six heads, and what are they rapping and shit? I was like, what are you rapping? What's this? I, like, I wrote some things, too, you know? I wrote some things, but, you know, I'm gonna keep it, you know, a little 7th grade talent show, you know, at Highview Junior High. You know, me and this dude named Kefli up there with the Run DMC, Adidas shirts and whatnot. Oh! And then, you know, the whole thing, the hip-hop, and then it was a rap from them. But anyways, what made me really go hard was the fact that when it was, like, freezing like it is right now, Okay, and it's just as hungry. Literally, people say, "Oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry." You get you get checks from the state to eat, man. What are you talking about? You ain't really hungry because you're a child and you have people who take care of you. But I was not that fortunate. So to to keep me in a place that was warm, I had to flow really good at least, be cool enough somewhat to get somebody to feed me. You understand that? And then I was doing it because nobody, nobody, everybody else wasn't doing it because it wasn't cool. There was just a few people who were. You know what I mean? And so I like to I always like to be the one who wasn't doing what everybody else does. Because they're like, oh man, that's whack. You ain't rhyming that rap. She went out back in 85, man. I'll be like, yeah, whatever to you, you know? But I sit up and I write and I write and I write and I rhyme. And this dude, I mean this dude, right? Now, full circles. Now, no, what, what's your next question? Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 check this out. I just needed to rhyme really well, okay, to get my mind off having to survive as a 16-year-old kid. And it's really tough. It was tough. And for everybody, that's what it is. But I felt like that was instilled, that was given to me as a gift to go ahead and feed myself. And where did it come from? Look above. And that's where, where everything else came from. So that's my hip hop reasoning for flowing. Really tough. Next question. <laughs> what? This dude, what? Okay, so. How with me, he says. Yeah, I'm about to tell him, about to tell him. I'm not really too sure if I seen you in, or, or, or polyed with you before this event. Then I'm about to, you know, get on it. We just touched on before the cameras went on. Right. 
but there was a club called the Blue Saloon. Now you're gonna have to tell me what year this is. Maybe you have it archived. I don't know. Think about it. Yeah. Anyway, so there is this because back then it was all about rap competitions and stuff. Like '95. Yeah, giving out prizes for some rap contest show, showcase talent show. Talent shows is where you're gonna get your rap on back them days, you feel me? Might have been 94. Yeah, it was 94 and something like that, mad old. And this dude, I, I knew about him a little bit cause he, cause see, I'm a car freak. People know the dude that Gene Poole is, or who he embodies. They know he's a car freak. And this dude, he, he took like a Ford Tempo and like bondoed it down, like shaved the handles, yo. Had like some fiberglass interior moldies and stuff with some graffitied out. I was like, yo, you really going hard on that Tempo right now, B, right? That was cussed. Okay, but before that, right, I'm figuring out some stuff about him. And so we find out that there's a show at the Blue Saloon, right? We're not even signed up or entered or nothing. Balam is, okay? He is whooping everybody. Me, Lance, and Doobie, which were full circle at the time, go in there and Evil E was judging that night and Evil E gave us first prize and we weren't even supposed to be there and Balam <laughs> took second and to this day, I'm, we, he's like, you motherfucker robbed me. <laughs> Man, you know what? And your boy was judging it too. I was like, no, nah, man, we set it off, son. We set it off. Come on. He's like, you triple team me. Balam was holding that shit down. I wish I could remember the song. I was alone. He was alone, and we triple teamed him. Like, full circle with said hunters, man. You know what I mean? And this guy's a lone headhunter, and we triple teamed him, and that was wrong. Next question. <laughs> there was one song and we made it at a house this dude what's his name say it Blom. say it Pat Bionic Pat Bionic mm -hmm. and I still remember more of his verse yeah. than I do of my own alright and and we did it on the SM57, come straight to heaven, come back to what, what, what he say? Man, I can't remember that shit, man. man so anyways, was there was so this dude, ago. there was this dude from Queens, right? What was he from, Queens or something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was a friend of, of a friend of mine who plays in a rock band. And the rock band was called the Coup de Gras, okay? And the, 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 the the guitarist went on to play with Andrew W.K., but that's later. So anyways, he hooked us up with this guy who does hip-hop beats. And now, back then, if you're like, if, if you could, if somebody makes beats, they are gold. Somehow, me and him is like, dude, let's go check out his beats. But Balam always had beats. Balam always had beats. I knew when nobody had beats, I could go to Balam's. And he was like an artist's retreat. He'd have his airbrushes set up. He was making these little lowrider model cars that actually hopped on the floor. I was like playing with him. And he's showing me the SP12 and the ASR. Yet he always had beats. But so we was over at over that. He was like, this dude got some beats. He's from Queens. Let's go check him out. And you know, my boy told me about him. So we went over there and he put on what we were recording it on like that two inch, like, well, no, no, no. What, what is that? Little eighth inch tape or something in his oh, house yeah, yeah, yeah. like going like this dude on the thing uh -huh. and we were passing around a mic with like a soccer sock on it and shit yeah, like yeah, a, with a sock with a sock over <laughs> it and this dude spit the illest i've ever heard in my life something like the sun sets over the horizon so run i bring danger like that stranger pointing shooting kids into the whip i spit and uh, uh, like the rhymes of napalm in the wind. Uh, 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 what, 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 you, you, you know the verse, man. Come I on, don't know dude. It. I don't know it. Dude, don't you know it. do because you help, you spit the whole thing on the phone the other uh. day. It's fun. Yeah. That was the only track we ever did together up until this. I got one word. What? Duh. <laughs> well, I was waiting for him to come back. And uh, I just knew that these two energies that we got is going to be a good mix.
And you know, we're not trying to, it's not trying to be all, oh, damn, it's a dragon, oh, mysterious, oh, no, <laughs> it's not like that, it's just like, you know, it, there's, there's symbols, there's symbols throughout life, you know, that show things, you know, and every time that, like, I, I've seen a depiction of a dragon, most of it was majestic, powerful, not, you know, mo mostly horrific sometimes, it depends on the purpose, but most of it was to protect something sacred. You know, all the dragons that I know. And, 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 and they're wise, they're not just savage creatures, they're not just, you know, and if they do, if they do slaughter, it's to eat mostly, you know what I mean? Or to maintain balance upon the, upon the surface of things, if you know what I mean. And so, but, you know, they're not thirst mongers. You know, they're just gonna sit back and stay vigilant. That's it. And when things get out of hand, you make an appearance. <laughs> and back up. Baby. We're gonna do some songs. Right. We're gonna probably do three songs and we're gonna splice them. We're gonna do like I'm gonna do a couple gene pool joints and then we're gonna probably do maybe maybe three maybe songs and then maybe that's and then I'll go into the gene pool set and then that's it for my part. And then I have to leave. Um Gangster horror. <laughs> Gangster horror. Wow, that is good. <laughs> There's no way I don't know what to say. He, that's his music. He's making that stuff. If it's gangster horror, then I'm on board with it. Let's ride. <laughs>